Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from HowToDrawComics.net and welcome to today's video. In this demonstration, we're going to be coloring up Oriana, who we inked up in a previous video. And I'll post, post the link to that video in the description below this one. But for now, let's take a look at what's happening here on the screen. So we've got the line art loaded up into Photoshop and I've set the line art blending mode to multiply, which allows us to essentially overlay the line art on top of everything else that's going to happen within this document as we work in the colors. And it allows us to place those base colors in without actually painting over the top of the line work, since the line work is sitting on top of everything else in the hierarchy. And you can see this layer hierarchy over to the right hand side of the screen there in the layers panel. You can see that at the bottom we've got the sketch which is invisible. Doesn't really matter, we're not going to need that at all for this demonstration. Not even sure why I've got it in there. And then we've got the base colors which are all kind of huddled together into a single layer group just to keep them organized. And then I've also named them to make sure that I don't get confused as to what base color it is I'm placing in to this to Ariana. <laughs> so I've got a base color there for the skin. You can see that I've just gone for a, a very basic kind of diluted peach pink looking color there. And I've got the crown, which I'm about to lay the base colors in for now. That's a diluted yellow color. They're all diluted colors. You'll notice that, right? And the reason for that is because mods kind of goes back to the way that I like to approach my particular coloring workflow. And because later on I'll be adding in adjustment layers to ramp up the contrast and the saturation and all that other good stuff, those colors are going to be intensified and brightened and saturated anyway. So knowing that and keeping it in mind, I try to keep these somewhat subdued in the beginning. I don't want them to be too vibrant or too fluorescent. Even though we are working on a fantasy piece here, which typically will have lots of colorful hues within it, we're going to keep it somewhat, you know, just a, a little bit toned down. And uh, I just find that that's a nice place to work in the shadows and the highlights from, personally, because uh, it keeps things a little bit easier to see as far as value, I think. And uh, again, I'm not quite sure exactly why I do the things I do when it comes to this stuff, or... You know, over time, I tend to just develop my approach. I test things out, I experiment a little bit, I see what works and what doesn't work, and I'll tend to navigate and hone my approach based on the the feedback that I'm getting as I work. So, you know, if I try something out and it just it doesn't pan out, well, I'm going to throw that approach out and try something new until I do find something that works. And then whatever works, I'll kind of you know, fold that into my typical workflow and I'll try to repeat that and refine it and improve upon it as much as possible. And that's kind of, you know, the way in which I think everybody ends up finding their way, finding their own unique way of working. In the beginning, of course, you look up tutorials such as this one and you learn from other artists through the, the various examples that you see. But then after a while, you, you learn to figure out for yourself what feels comfortable and what's going to get you the result that you're after. And that was most definitely what happened to me because I tried out so many different approaches. I looked up a lot of tutorials. I guess when I was first learning digital painting, which is essentially what I'm going to be doing here, it's not, of course, a, a traditional like oil painting, even aesthetic, but we will be building up the, the values and the colors in a similar way, of course. But there was only a few tutorials back when I was learning this stuff, and it was kind of a good thing that there were only a few because it meant that I, you know, the amount of learning that I could take in was somewhat manageable, whereas it's, it's really hard to just pay attention these days just because there's, you, you, there's so much information out there. Like, what do you focus on? And what do you invest the amount of time in that it's going to take in order to, to master each one of these different techniques and approaches? And that's kind of the thing. There's only a limited amount of time. So you have to uh, really do a lot of sifting these days, especially if you're looking at tutorials on YouTube and even like Udemy and S Skillshare and a lot of those premium learning platforms now are 
getting more and more saturated with learning resources and, you know, different instructors and that kind of thing. And it is really a good thing. It is a, a wonderful time we live in with this abundance of information that we have available to us, but it can be a little bit overwhelming and it can be even more difficult to know where to begin. So now I'm going in and I'm working on the background here for Oriana's illustration. The reason that I'm starting with the background is because of the way that it's going to cause her to be lit and colored. So obviously there's this big flaming blue light behind her, so she's going to be lit from behind. There's going to be a nice blue rim light around the outside edges of her silhouette there, which I already know just based on where that light source is positioned. And it's also going to be blue. It's going to it's going to be a cool color scheme that we're going for here. And again, it's that background lighting that's determining that. So now I'm going in and I'm adding a, a fill layer, which is set to multiply, which I am going to change up later on because I realize this being my old approach to coloring comics, that this just isn't going to work for the particular illustration that I'm working on here. And I should say, by the way, that this is uh, this character, Oriana, I mentioned this in the previous video, but she was actually a pre-designed character that I was hired to illustrate by a games company called Tin Man Games, which were an excellent company to work for. Absolutely couldn't have had a better experience with uh, Neil and the rest of the, uh, the team over at Tin Man Games. And so she already had a pre made design and she was a character originally from a uh, a game book called the warlock of firetop mountain which uh neil and his team at tin man actually converted into a like a full-on like you know strategy game that uh you know was like an interactive story and this particular illustration is kind of at the beginning you know oriana someone gives you the the mission uh that you you'll need to embark on throughout the video game but because of that, she had an already established color palette that I had to work with. So I was kind of choosing the colors based on that pre-existing palette. Um, now, that meant I didn't really have to think about a whole lot of color theory or anything like that because the color scheme was already set. All I had to do was kind of replicate that here in this illustration. But you do need to make sure that when you're laying in those initial base colors, they all go together well. They all sit together in an aesthetically pleasing way. You know, you don't want to be putting fluorescent greens next to fluorescent pinks or anything like that, because that's just going to burn the the eyes out of anyone who's looking at that, that illustration. Um, so you want to make sure that you're kind of keeping that stuff in mind. Um, now again, I've gotten rid of the fill layer, so I'm not working with it anymore. Instead, the approach that I have now taken is a little bit more similar to the approach that I will typically take to coloring these days, which is to just go straight in and start dropping in the shadows. Now, I am working on a multiply layer, a shadow overlay layer, which uh, is essentially overlaying the airbrushed shadows on top of the the character and I'm kind of shading it that way. Now I did place in some base colors there, okay? So I placed in some base shadows and I kind of, you know, started to describe the form at least on a very basic level before I started doing that. And what this shadow overlay allows me to do is add color to those darker tones. Uh, same with the highlight overlay which you can see me working on now. It's Blending mode is set to multiply, whereas the shadow overlay is set to multiply. Wait a second. So <laughs> the shadow overlay is set to multiply. The highlight overlay is set to overlay. All right, that makes sense. And that overlays the colors in different ways, but um, what it essentially allows you to do as a digital painter is it allows you to color the lighter values and the darker values within your scene without necessarily affecting the level of value. It's essentially just coloring the lighting and coloring the shadow, which is really something that you want to try to do because realistically, that's how real light is going to be perceived. It's, it's very rarely going to be pure white. Usually, 
pure white light would be reserved for environmental conditions that are very, you know, sterile, like, you know, in a, in a dentist, uh, when you're sitting in a dentist chair or, you know, like a hospital, like artificially lit environments are usually going to have, you know, this fluorescent white light that really has no color to it. But naturally lit environments, especially environments such as this, which have a very clear color to the lighting, are going to have some level of hue to it. And it's that hue that you want to overlay onto the character. Now, the shadows you'll notice are somewhat kind of, you know, they're blue, but they're a blue-purple, okay? So they're a cooler tone, but they're a warm cooler tone because purple is slightly warmer than blue. And you'll notice that the highlight is not yellow or orange or warm like you'd normally see within a, a warm light and a cool shadow lighting setup. It's actually a cool highlight. And because it's a cool highlight, that's the reason that I've gone for a bit more of a warmer variation of the shadow. Again, you can have warmer, cooler colors, and you can have cooler, warmer colors. And, you know, an example of a warmer, of a cooler, warmer color would be, um, for example, you've got yellow. Well, a cooler version of yellow would, or a cooler, warmer version, or a cooler version of warm color would be, <laughs> I'm confusing myself here, would be, for example, you know, green, getting into the greens and, and that kind of thing. Again, it's still kind of a warm color, but it's getting into those cooler hues. So hopefully I didn't confuse you as much as I just confused myself, but uh, that's kind of the way that I'm dialing these colors. Now, what you'll notice that I've done is I've actually added in a few adjustment layers over the top of the work that I'd already done. So I place in a curves adjustment layer, which allows me to essentially tweak the contrast of the overall image. And then on top of that, I've added in a color balance. And that color balance allows me to harmonize the colors that are within the illustration and make sure that they all blend and sit nicely together. And these adjustment overlays are kind of like cheap uh, little uh, things that you can do in order to make sure your colors look nicer on the screen. And I often will place them in, usually at the end. I guess I got a little bit keen with this particular illustration and wanted to throw them right in over the top just to see how they would look. But uh, yeah, and now I've turned them off so that I can kind of keep on working on the illustration and, and start placing in some of the finer details, such as the highlights on her hair here and uh, the details on her fingernails. Now, usually what I'll do once I've placed in all the smaller details is I'll start to blend the different tones together and try to smooth the transitions between the various values just to describe the form with a little bit more of a smoothness to it. Because, you know, you, what you're trying to do here is, or at least what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to get across a few things within the way that these different forms and materials are rendered. One, I want to try to represent the material as being the actual material that it's supposed to be. So, you know, looking at the crown, for example, like that's very clearly some kind of metal material. And I want to make sure that it looks distinctly more metal than, for example, her skin, which isn't metal at all. Uh, it needs to look like skin. Her skin needs to look like skin. The crown needs to look like metal. Her clothes need to look like, you know, whatever material they're made of. Those distinctions need to be there, and they're most often represented in the clearest way through the level of reflectivity to them. Okay, so the amount of light which is reflected off of them and the intensity at which it's reflected off of. So the metal crown, as an example, is going to reflect light at a higher intensity than the skin. Now, the skin is actually still fairly reflective, believe it or not. Skin is is quite reflective. It's not as reflective as, you know, metal or chrome, of course. You know, you're not going to see a reflection in skin, but it does bounce light off of it at a higher intensity than, say, for example, the material of her clothing, which, you know, I've tried to make sure I've I dialed all these different levels of reflectivity accordingly. 
Now, I know that this is a lot to take in, and it is a big deal, you know, actually painting something and, and rendering it in an accurate way that comes across correctly to the viewer is a very difficult thing to do, and there's a lot of components that go into it that, that fall far outside the scope of what I'm going to be able to share with you in this video. But if I can just get the, the corner notes out there for you to kind of at least uh, start to consider what you might need to do when it comes to creating a convincing, captivating looking digital illustration, then that's the main thing. And it, it oftentimes does all come down to the lighting and, uh, and the values, the way that those values contrast with one another. And then of course the color itself. And the color itself really comes, at least for me, through an organic process you know once those base colors are down all I do is I choose a, a darker version of whatever base color it is that I want to go over the top of and a lighter version of it for the highlights and the shadows and then I'll once those main values are placed in you know again we're, we're talking about just the local shadow color and highlight local color and, and then the base tones, okay? So you've got a, a mid-tone, a highlight tone, and a shadow tone. And they're all kind of derived from that, that initial base tone. And so in order to actually get the richness of the colors come through and to make sure that they're colored according to the lighting conditions that the character is under, that all comes through in the overlays, okay? So that shadow overlay and the highlight overlay. And then on top of that, you know, I'll usually create another layer for the finishing touches, but the point is that those shadow overlays and the highlight overlays establish the richness of the color palette so that I can work off of it and have a nice scale of hue there to begin painting out the rest of the forms and really articulating them to a higher degree of finesse. And then, of course, after all that's said and done, it's really the adjustment layers that are going to allow me to, to pump out the highlights and to increase the depth of the shadows and to introduce that level of contrast that really makes the entire illustration pop. But that is pretty much it. And it, it flew by, of course, and coloring really is quite a quick process. Once you get used to the process and you understand what that entails, um, but again, you know, if anything, hopefully you got a little bit of a taste as to, you know, what goes into the coloring process and the way I like to approach it. Uh, we will have more videos, of course, on coloring and, and I'll take you through uh, more of a, an explanation, maybe next time in the next illustration. But again, I hope you got a lot of value out of this one at least. And uh, yeah, it was a really fun illustration to work on. Again, thanks to Tin Man Games for allowing me the opportunity to, to do the Oriana up for them. If you like this video, be sure to check out www.howtodrawcomics.net for more comic art tips, tricks, and tutorials. We got a, an insane library that's ever growing of videos and, and tutorials and even courses up there now um, that'll take you through a lot of different aspects of the comic art craft and uh, hopefully give you more insight into exactly what you'll need to focus on in order to to learn and hone your abilities in comic book art so be sure to check it out again it's www.howtodrawcomics.net some people know about the site some people don't but hope now you do so you can check it out whenever you like and of course be sure to bookmark it because we're always updating it with new content until next time keep on creating keep on practicing and i'll catch you in the next video